So to work out our fabric requirements, I'm going to just take you through what we need to make this pouch. And I'm going to start off with this multicoloured fabric on this pouch here. And for that, you need to cut a piece of fabric that is approximately 10 inches wide by 16 inches tall. Um, and we're going to quilt that piece of fabric onto a scrap of wadding that you might have or a piece of felt. Or you could just put interfacing on the back to make it a little bit thicker. Um, but we just want to give it a bit of structure. So it's 10 inches wide by 16 inches tall and that will get cut to a more precise size later after it's been quilted. For the prairie point, which is this bit here, which is our tab for opening it up, we're going to cut ourselves two triangles of fabric, which are going to be four and a half inches by four and a half inches. So they're gonna be the prairie points that will be on either side of your pouch. And then for the tag, if you want to use a tag, we're going to cut a piece of fabric which is two and a half wide by four and a half tall, like that. And that will end up being the tab for our lobster clasp at the end. Don't have to do that if you don't want to. You don't have to put a clasp in it. You can just have it so that it's something that can be hung up. Um, but if you want to do that, that's two and a half by four and a half. And then we also need to cut two pieces of fabric. These are going to be the lining of our pouch, but they're also going to wrap over to the front and be this yellow bit here. And they are cut nine inches wide by nine and a quarter inches tall. Now, if you're not too sure about being precise about everything, maybe cut it 10 inches tall and we can do a little bit of trimming off. That's no problem. But nine inches wide by approximately 10 inches tall. And then we're also going to have a couple of strips of interfacing on the back of those. Um, this is a non-woven interfacing. It's just to give it a little bit of strength at the top. And that's two inches by nine inches. So two inches by nine inches on the interfacing. Um, and that will get applied to the bottom edge of your print. So if I just turn this around, my print on this fabric goes in that direction. And so those interfacing strips are going to get ironed onto the bottom edge of my strips and then that way when I attach it my strips on the outside will have the pattern going in the right direction. And then last but not least you're going to need to prepare two pieces of tape measure and these are going to be eight inches wide so if you've cut nine inches for your pouch you're going to cut your tape so that it's one inch smaller so these are eight inches. And you can cut the tape measure with a normal um, pair of scissors. Don't use your best scissors, but with a normal pair of scissors. And they'll have really sharp ends. So then all you need to do is just cut off a little curve on the edges. Um, be really careful of the bits that come off because they're really sharp and spiky. And then just wrap a bit of um, gaffer tape, duct tape around the ends so that it's nice and smooth and you're not going to hurt anything. Um, if you don't cut the edges off, um, it's quite sharp going into your project and it'll also be a sharp point um, that might wear through the edges a bit quicker. So we're, we're trimming a curve on the edges of the tape measure and then we're wrapping them in duct tape so that they don't wear through our fabric quite so much. Let's get ready. So the first thing that we need to do is quilt our piece of outside fabric onto whatever it is that we've chosen to go behind it. Um, and this is a really simple part of the project. Um, I'm a big fan of quite wavy lines of quilting. So if I just hold this up a bit closer, you can see there are just wavy lines going all the way down this piece of fabric. And that's exactly what I'm going to do now on the sewing machine. So I'm going to quilt my blue fabric onto my piece of wadding. Again, it's recycled wadding pieces just put together with a bit of zigzag stitching. And I've just pinned my fabric onto the top. Um, you can, if you have to hand, use something called um, 505 spray, which is a spray adhesive. Um, that can be quite helpful. Just make sure if you use this that you're in a well-ventilated room um, and make sure you've got something behind you uh, when you spray because it sprays out a little sticky glue everywhere and you don't want that to go on um, maybe your cutting board or whatever your surface is behind your project. So I'm just going to take this to the machine and quilt it and then I'll come back. So my fabric is now quilted. Um, it's quite tricky to see from this side, but if I flip it over, 
and lay it back down, you can see my lines of quilting on the back here. Um, so I've just done wavy lines all across my piece of fabric. And I now need to trim this one piece of fabric into two pieces which are nine inches wide, so I'll be having it this way round, by seven and a quarter inches tall. So I'm just going to trim my fabric down. So next up, we're going to prepare our prairie, po prairie points and also the little bit for the hook tape um, at the edge there. So first off, to make your prairie points, we're going to take your two pieces, which are squares of four and a half by four and a half, and we're going to fold them over in half like so. And then using a warm iron, just going to put a crease in like so. Let that one cool and I'll do the other one. So these are four and a half inches by four and a half inches. You could make them a bit bigger if you wanted to. Um, you could, of course, just use a piece of ribbon instead of a prairie point. And then from there, we're just going to fold this bottom edge across. So bringing the folded edge up and all the raw edges together. I'm just going to press that. And then I'm just going to do the same from the other side. Bring the folded edge in to meet. Oh, it's getting quite hot on the ironing pad now. So that's one prairie point, which it might be helpful just to pop a pin in that, just to hold it in shape. And then we're going to just do the other one. Do make sure you use some kind of ironing mat to do this, even if you're at your cutting board. The amount of times I've accidentally ironed on top of my cutting mat is not funny. I'm just going to pop a pin in that one. And then we need to prepare our piece of fabric for the hook, or the hoop rather. So we're going to fold our fabric in half lengthways and then let that open out. Just find the cooler part of my ironing board and then I'm just going to fold those raw edges into the centre. So just like if you were preparing um, a piece of bias binding. And with those folded into the centre, I'm just going to run the iron. So I'm just going to take this over to the sewing machine now and I'm just going to top stitch down either side just to hold that all in place. Um, arguably it doesn't need it on the left hand side because that's just where the main fold is but it looks nice I think if there's two lines of stitching going down both sides. So I'm just going to go to the machine and do that now. So just to show you on the machine like before because I'm top stitching and I want my stitching to be really nice and parallel to the edge of my work I'm lining up the edge with the centre of my foot on my presser foot and then I'm going to offset the needle two clicks to the left and then that means that as long as I keep this folded edge in line with the marker on the middle of my presser foot my stitching is always going to be beautifully parallel to that line. Um, it's my top stitching top tip really and if I just hold the threads out the back when I get started that helps pull it through. Back into the machine. Cut it free. And then there you see beautiful top stitching. And I'm going to go down and do the other side now. Okay, so we've got our prairie points and our loop tape there. Um, so I've now taken the um, one of the front pieces, outside pieces of my pouch, and I've marked on a inch down from the top raw edge. You can see that there. And I've done that by using um, an inch uh, patchwork inch ruler and also a friction pen. 
friction pens are great because you can draw onto fabric and then you can iron the fabric and the markings disappear. They're available from most supermarkets and stationery shops these days. They're really widely available. And um, the thing to know about them is that when you expose the fabric to cool temperatures, um, the markings do come back. So I wouldn't use it to do markings on a coat if I was making a coat because I'd wear that out in the cold. Um, and um, quilters in America where they're shipping their quilts um, across state for quilting um, competitions and the like have discovered that the markings come back when the quilt goes in the hold. So just something to bear in mind. But for everyday craft projects, they're absolutely fine. So I've done a line an inch down from my top raw edge. And I've also just popped a pin in by folding my fabric in half to mark the centre of my fabric. So I know where the centre point is. I'm now going to take my prairie point. I'm going to line the raw edges up with my one inch line and I'm going to get the point of my prairie point just below my pin. I'm then going to take one of my lining pieces of fabric and I'm going to take the interfaced edge and I'm going to pop that down on top like so and I'm going to pin all those layers together. And what we're going to do is we're going to stitch the lining to the outside fabric and at the same time we are going to be attaching the prairie point which we're going to use to open up our snap back. Just push that pin through there. I can take that pin out the top that was marking the middle and then I'm ready to go and sew that um, using my machine and a quarter inch foot. Okay so I got to the end of this project and realised that I hadn't shot how to add the little bit of a loop to put on the side of your pouch. So I've just had to do a little quick insert. So behind me, I've got my piece of blue fabric that's the outside of my zip pouch. And I've marked an inch down from the raw edge at the top and I've drawn on a one inch line using a friction pen. And I'm using that to mark where my prairie point should go, which would be in the center from side to side. At this point, I would also take my um, loop tape that I've created, I'm going to fold that in half and then position that on one of the sides about another inch down from that draw line, so about two inch down from the top. And I'm just going to pin that in place and then I will go to the sewing machine and stitch that, just a basting stitch, a really long stitch to anchor that in place so that that's ready for when we sew around the whole of our pouch. So we're just positioning it so that it is two inches down from the top edge of your outside fabric with about a centimetre, five eighths of an inch, three eighths of an inch hanging over the edge to make sure that it's securely in. And if you wanted to put a lobster clip on it, obviously feed it through the lobster clip first. Okay, so I'm back at my machine. I've popped my quarter inch foot on and I've straightened my needle back up or centered my needle rather so that um, it's not going to hit the foot as I sew. I'm going to hold the threads at the back to help pull the fabric through. And I'm just going to sew down a quarter inch seam. Okay, so we're back at the table. Um, so I've sewn my quarter inch seam and I'm now gonna push back my interfacing and then I'm just gonna fold my lining so that it goes over the top of my wadding and back down the other side. And that interfacing is also gonna be a fold at the top. So if I just hold it like this, you're gonna see that you're gonna fold that interfacing just there around the top of your wadding or whatever you've used to stiffen your pouch and I'm just going to do exactly the same at that end. Just crease that in place. This is a non-woven interfacing so it's quite papery so it does crease really nicely. And then I will see what I've got left of my fabric hanging out the bottom. So that's one done. Twist that round and I'm just going to do exactly the same on the other. So just folding that interfacing Better picture there around the top of the wadding finger pressing it there and I'm just going to do the same at this side folding it around the top of the wadding 
and just finger pressing it in place. Like so. And just smooth that down. So again, I can see that where I cut a little bit extra fabric, that's great. I can just trim that off now. Let's get my ruler and my rotary cutter and just slice that away. That's that one. And that's that one. So you can begin to see what the outside of your pouch is going to look like. Okay, so a lot of the pouch tutorials for these snappy frames that are on the internet show you how to make a pouch like this one, but they've got the raw edges on the inside. And that really bothers me. So I'm gonna show you today how to make one of these without having the raw edges on the inside. So first off, we're going to take our pouch fabric and we're gonna lay one of them the right side up like this. And we're gonna lay the other one on top of it, right side down. And we're putting the two outside edges and the two lining pieces on top of each other, just like we would for any other um, purse that you're making and turning through. But what I want you to be really careful of is matching up those edges there and those point, those lining up lines where your lining fabric meets your outside fabric. So we're going to pin that together really carefully all the way around, making sure to leave a hole in the lining for turning through. And what's really important when we sew this together is that we're going to use the quarter inch seam allowance on our machines again. And it's really important here that we do use the quarter inch seam allowance. So I'm just going to match up those two bits and put a pin in there so they don't move. And then I'm just going to match up my lining fabrics as well. Don't worry about as many pins in my lining fabric. And I'm going to leave a gap for turning through at the bottom. So I'm going to put a pin there and I'm going to put a pin there. Okay, so I'm going to sew all the way around my pouch. Um, here I'll be making sure to sew down Sorry, here I'll be making sure to sew down my wadding um, and I'm going to make sure I leave an opening in the lining. I always like to have crossing corners on all of my projects. I just feel it makes everything a little bit stronger in the corners. As you approach the bulk, but everything is really nicely trapped underneath. stretch so it might just distort a little bit but don't worry. And I've got a little bit of an overhang just here so I'm just going to come in a little bit more than a quarter of an inch to make sure I get both edges.
Now you'll notice when I was sewing that I didn't take any of the pins out. Most of them weren't very close to the seam line, but even those that were, because they were perpendicular, my machine has gone over them. Um, machines won't always go over them and sometimes you might break your needle, but I'm pretty confident with this machine that it does always tend to um, skip over the pins for me. So now I'm just going to take this back to my work table. Okay, so as you can see, this pouch here has got a boxed corner, which means it gives it a bit of a bottom to it. So how do we do that? There are a couple of ways, but one of the easiest ways is to measure yourself a two inch square in the bottom corner of your bag. So I'm doing it just like this and I'm going to use the friction pen to draw that. So that's a two inch corner. If you don't want it to box as much, for example, we might want to think about one and a half. Just draw in a one and a half. And I think actually on this one, one and a half is going to be better for me. So I'm just going to use my ruler to draw in a one and a half square. So I've done that on both of the bottom uh, of the outside and then I've got to turn it around and do it on this side as well. And you do need to make sure when you're doing this that your stitching extends beyond the size of the box that you're, oh, that's not one and a half by one and a half. That's one and a half by one and a half. So make sure that your stitching extends beyond um, where you're boxing, otherwise it's gonna make it more complicated for you. So just to show you what we're gonna do next, I always tend to do this with scissors. I'm going to cut out that square and then I will pinch that fabric to make a straight edge and I will stitch that through the sewing machine. So I will run a seam along there and I'll use the quarter inch seam allowance as before and try to match up your seams and just push your seam allowances in either direction. Nesting the seams just makes for a flatter um, piece of work at the end of the day. So I'm going to do that on all four corners um, and then I'll come back. Okay, so I've sewn all my box corners and I've also just gone to the iron and quickly pressed my seam allowances back so that when I come to sew my hole in the lining open, um, shut even, um, it's gonna be a lot easier for me. So the principle is that our pieces of tape measure are going to end up sat in this little pocket here, but we need to finish making the bag before we pop them inside. So the first thing to do is to turn our bag through. So I'm just gonna pull it through like we would normally and push out those nice bottom corners like so. And then we're going to sew this bottom lining shut. So I'm just going to go to the sewing machine and whiz that shut. With the bottom hole now shut, I'm going to open my bag up and push my lining down inside. And I'm going to make sure that it fits really nicely and snugly exactly where I want it to and when I bring it out to the outside it should look even across the top on both sides and you can feel with your fingers because you've got your interfacing and your wadding in there as well. Okay what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do a line of top stitching just down from that top edge and then I'm going to do a line of top stitching just up from that seam just there. So I'll have two lines of stitching going around this pink band at the top of my bag. One just below the top fold and one just above that seam there. Okay, so I've now just finished my top stitching, which you can see there. 
and the check is to make sure that your tape measure is going to fit between those two lines, which mine is quite comfortably, which is great. So my cheeky trick is to now go to the inside side seam of your lining and we're just going to get a quick unpick and unpick a few of those stitches. Okay. Okay, so I've unpicked a few of those stitches. You can see my raw edge there. I'm now going to take my tape measure and I'm going to thread it into the hole so that the curve of the tape measure is going to be to the outside of my pot or my pouch and the numbers are going to be to the inside. So I'm just going to thread that down there and then push it all the way down until it gets to the other end. Just a little bit further. And that's that side in. And then I'm going to do exactly the same for the other side. Thread the other side in, in the other direction with the numbers showing and the curve to the outside. So I thread it all the way down. If you can hold it in your hand like this and get it all the way down before you let go. There we go. One snap pouch. And all I've got to do now is just a little bit of hand sewing to sew that shut. What I Eva. Yay! Yes, yes.